Welcome everyone, I'm Josh Cruz. I'm one of the production facilities technicians here at the Pratt School of Architecture. Today we're gonna to be going over how to use a vacuum former effectively. We're gonna cover the tools and materials you're gonna to need to do this, how to install and uninstall the reducing windows, loading your material, loading your molds, uh, doing a few different type of molds, uh, mold vacuum formings like found objects, uh, masks and uh, other three like things like 3d prints and uh, troubleshooting that process along the way okay before you start don't forget to come on over to the back of the machine on the bottom back right hand side there is an on switch so you can turn the machine on zero is off one is on so you turn it to on now we can go ahead and get started Okay everyone, so before we begin, begin our vacuum forming process, we're going to go over some of the materials and tools you're going to need to have a successful process using this machine. The very first thing we're going to need is a vacuum formable plastic of some kind. Uh, this is a sheet of polystyrene, which is a vacuum formable plastic. The next thing we will need is a plastic cutting knife. This is a scoring knife, which we will use to cut our material down to the appropriate size. If it's uh, too big uh, or if we need it to be smaller. The next tools that we'll need are a caliper and a tape measure. The caliper is going to help us identify the thickness of the material so we can identify the appropriate uh, length of uh, heating for our material. The tape measure is going to help us figure out what size our material is currently and what size it needs to be. We will also need a roll of tape and a marker or pen of some kind to label our material. Again, this is polystyrene, which we know right now, uh, but it's very difficult to identify one plastic from another. And so for our future selves, we're going to label this so we know that this is polystyrene uh, later down the line. We are also going to need molds of some kind. There are a variety of different things you can use as a mold. It can be something more complex like this mask. It can be a relatively simple geometry. It can even be a found object of some kind. Any of these are suitable molds and uh, we're going to need a mold of some kind to form our plastic over. We'll also need a infrared thermometer to identify the temperature of our plastic while it's being heated up so that we know when we're at the appropriate forming temperature and can form our mold. We will also need a base of some kind. The standard base is a wire mesh. This comes inside of the machine at the bottom. It helps separate the mold from the bottom of the machine so we can get a lot of vacuum being pulled and our plastic pulled tightly to our mold. This uh, leaves a texture on the bottom of our vacuum form Um, but the one difficulty with this, the one challenge we have is that it's difficult to repeatedly place your mold in the same place. If we use a solid base, we can then mount our mold with some screws or some bolts to any of the holes inside of the space so that we can get it repeatedly in exactly the same location when we're doing our vacuum forming. Here you can see finally, with the help of all of these tools and materials, you can get some pretty desirable final results. Here we have uh, a mold of our found object, which is this lens. Okay, so we've got our mold. The next step is to figure out which one of these reducing windows our mold fits into. We want to pick the smallest one so we can maximize the amount of material we have and are going to use. Each of the reducing windows, there are four of them, are labeled one, two, three, so on and so on. One to four. Uh, the B stands for bottom. Uh, this is the first Reducing window, each reducing window has two parts. This is the bottom of number one, the bottom of number two, etc., etc. Each one also has the opening dimensions labeled. So if your mold is smaller than four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths, it should fit in this window, which it does, that's perfect. However, 
uh, we will need a piece of material that's larger than that because the material has to come around the outside of the gaskets. But now I know if this is the reducing window I'm using, I should use a piece of material that is at least six and a quarter by six and a quarter. If my mold is larger for whatever reason, I can use a larger reducing window, but I need to pay attention to what the minimum size of the material I need to cut is. So now that I know I need a piece of material that's six and a quarter by six and a quarter, I can go ahead and cut one of those down. Okay, and then we just make sure it fits over number one. Pull this back over here. It doesn't matter that it fell off. And... Okay, so I've cut my material down. I've got my one millimeter polystyrene, which I've labeled. And uh, I've cut it down to six and a quarter by six and a quarter because that's the size of the minimum material I need for the reducing window I'm gonna use. Uh, before I can uh, put this in the machine though, we can see that there's already this reducing window in here, but it's not the one I need. So I have to remove this one. This one's gotta go. So I'll set my plastic off to the side. And what I need to do is remove these pins here so that I can get rid of this reducing window. There's just a little cotter pin on the inside here and I'm just gonna push this pin up and I can grab the loop and just pull that out. Once I've done that, I'm going to put that in the little magnet tray so I don't lose it. I'll do the same thing for the back pin. Pull the pin out, stick it in the little magnet tray, and then I can push each of these two pins out of the frame and just set those in my magnet tray so they don't get lost either. Now I can unclamp the machine by pushing down on these levers, one at a time, one and two, put a little bit of down pressure and then slowly lift this up so it doesn't fling up really quickly. Now I can remove this reducing window and I can grab the one that I do need, which is one. I need reducing window number one, and I'll start with one B, which is the bottom. Two B wasn't in here, so we got lucky there. We didn't have to pull that one out, but installing the bottom reducing window is really easy. I just take these two bottom holes, and I try and match these two bottom holes up with these two bolts here. And so I will take my reducing window, and I just sl slowly drop it over those two bolts until it fits. That's perfect. And I wanna make sure the lettering is facing me so I can read it. That's perfect. Now we're gonna take our top reducing window. And again, there's a label on here. So we just wanna make sure we can read that label. It's facing us. It's not the opposite way. I'll slowly put this down right on top of the machine. And then I'll slowly bring the clamp down and slide the window forward until it fits in between the two bars on the clamp. I go all the way down and then I'll clamp one and then the second lever. Now that I've done this, I just repeat the opposite or I do the opposite of what I did before. I grab my pin, I stick it in the hole on the front here. And if it doesn't fit, you might have to loosen the clamps up and shimmy it over one way or the other just to make sure your pins fit. So a little bit of back and forth. There we go, that's perfect. Now I'll clamp that back down. The pin is in and I can stick my cotter pin back in here. This will keep the top reducing window from falling out when I am using the machine. I'll stick the second pin in here in the back. And I like to put these in, oh, and again there we're having a little trouble with some alignment, so I'll unclamp it a smidge, shimmy it over a little bit. Okay, great. Now when I lift the shield up, you can see the top reducing window goes with the clamp. Perfect. Now I can stick my material in here. Right? I just, I'm just gonna see that it fits. That looks perfect to me. We're gonna stop there. Okay, now that a reducing window is installed, what we can do is place our mold inside of the machine. So what we're gonna do is grab this level lever here and pull it towards us. That brings the table up and it allows us to position our mold 
on the inside of the reducing window, somewhere where it's not going to hit when we pull the machine up. That looks good to me. Now that it's in the right position, we can bring the table back down. Excellent. Now I'm going to unclamp my top reducing window so that I can place my material on the inside of the machine. Uh, what I want to do is make sure if there's a protective film on here or if there's any tape or anything like that, I remove it so that my material can form the way I want it to and we're not burning any paper or excess plastic or anything like that. That's in the right position. Now I can go ahead and close this and clamp my frame. So we have our mold inside the machine, our materials in the frame. We're just about ready to go here. Before we begin, we just want to identify what kind of material this is. And again, just like our label said earlier, this is one millimeter polystyrene. Polystyrene, that's our PS. And we can identify the recommended forming temperature. Recommended forming temperature for this is between 150 and 175 Celsius. So we know that's what we're going to shoot for. So everything's in place now. We've had our machine preheating for a while. That's this button here. We showed up, preheated the machine. About 20 minutes have elapsed. And so the machine should be nice and warm. What we want to do now is hit this big play button. We're going to hit that play button. Now there's two options after we hit the play button, both of which might seem confusing, and that's OK. If you're confused, there's a question mark button, which you can press. And pressing that question mark button tells you what each of the buttons does. Uh, it gives you a little description of each button. And so this helps us understand that the hand symbol here is manual operation. There's no, no preset settings that you want to use. So if you're doing a, a particularly odd material or a unconventional material thickness, maybe you want to press the hand setting and experiment a little bit. Otherwise, you can just press the folder button and there's a series of preloaded materials for our most commonly used materials and thicknesses. So we can see our first option is PS one millimeter. That's polystyrene one millimeter. If we press that button, it pulls up the settings for polystyrene one millimeter that we as the shop staff have determined you should have some success with. Uh, it has the preloaded temperature and time that you'll need to heat the material before it's formable ideally. Now that this is loaded and everything is hot, all we have to do is pull forward the heater and we can see as soon as it's pulled forward, the timer starts ticking down. We are counting down from 90 seconds and we're shooting for 150 to 175 degrees Celsius. Since we know that's our range, we can grab our handy dandy temperature gun and try and identify that temperature once we're at the end of the 90 second range. We're here in the beep because we're done there. We're going to push that back and we can check our temperature. We can see we're only at 110 Celsius. So we're not in the appropriate temperature range yet, which means we need to heat this for a little longer. Maybe we didn't preheat it for long enough. Maybe other external conditions have cooled it down, like the air conditioner or something. But what we know is this has got to get a little hotter. So we're going to keep going for, let's say, another 30 seconds. We're going to do our best to gauge this. And we're shooting for that 150 to 175 temperature range. Excellent, so let's see, we are at 157. We're right inside that temperature range. What we can do is give this a little bit of pre-stretch. It'll go ahead and inflate the material a little bit so that we can bring our table up and we can pull down the vacuum. And we wanna hold this vacuum for oh, maybe 10, 15 seconds. We can Release the vacuum by pressing the vacuum button. And what we want to do is make sure this is cooler than the glass temperature setting before we go ahead and release that. So our glass temperature, that's when this starts to become kind of formable. And uh, so we want this to be cooler than that. So it's definitely cooler than 94 Celsius. So we should be able to go ahead and bring the table down. A little bit of releasing air, bring the table down, and then we can 
put our gun down and unclamp our mold here. So we've unclamped this and we can lift this out. And you can see here we've got uh, our vacuum form, probably a little small, right? Maybe we wanna go up to the next reducing window size so we can get the entire pull on uh, this material. I think the lens was just outside of the frame here maybe. And so, uh, yeah, maybe we wanna go up one reducing window size for this. Excellent. So. We are going to do a second pull of our found object at the lens. We increased the size of our reducing windows here, so we've got our two A and Bs as opposed to our one. We've loaded our material already, and we've been preheating the machine for roughly 20, 25 minutes. So it's nice and hot. What we can do is go ahead and pull the heater forward, and we are gonna let that run for about 90 seconds. We'll check our temperature with our temperature gun. Hopefully we get some better results because the material has more of an opening for it to stretch over the mold. Great. That was another 30 seconds. We're at 160. That's perfect. We're gonna bring this up. It inflates a little bit. Pull the vacuum. Hold it for about 15. We release the vacuum. We can give that a second to chill. And we're gonna wait for this to come down below 94 Celsius, which is our glass temperature. It's already lower than 94 Celsius, so we can go ahead and bring our table down, put our gun back, unclamp, and we've got a pretty decent result there. Great, so we've got our solid base here. You can see I've got a mold here that has been mounted to this board with a few screws. And so this is not gonna come off of here. The benefit of this is every single one of my vacuum forms is gonna be exactly the same. I'm gonna mount this to this board with the table up. Oh, not that guy. Okay, so I've loaded the solid base. My mold is mounted to it. It's heating up now. Got a few seconds left. We're gonna slide that back. We're gonna check our temperature. We are at 156, that's perfect. I'm gonna slide this up, pull the vacuum on that. Pull the vacuum until this is completely cooled off. I want that to be below, be below 94. Great, I'm a few degrees below. I can release the vacuum. I'll give this a few air puffs to help separate it from the mold. Then I can bring the table down and my mold went with my table. I got a perfect vacuum form here. And every single one of these that I do will be exactly the same. The other big benefit of this is I don't have this lip here. There's no lip around the edge. It's completely flat and there's no wire mesh texture on that. It's completely smooth. That's how you vacuum form. Now that we're done, we can go ahead and flip our machine off from the one to the zero to turn it off.